The Day of Andrew Walsh Andrew had been walking through the streets of London for over four hours. The claustrophobic heat of the vicious summer had made him sweat out every last drop of enthusiasm from his pores. His feet ached. The last vestiges of his soles were wearing through, the cobbles beneath jabbing into his arches, the smell of horse dung that salted his nostrils as it baked in the sun. He gagged, anxiety turning the trickle of sweat across his forehead into a free flow. Why was he bothering to do this? Why? Was he addicted to the indignity of this? No. He still had his pride. This was merely... desperation. He had given up on shouting out the words he had written. Andrew's throat burned and he had not stopped for a drop to drink in all the time he had wandered. Other things had seemed much more important. He stared down at the crudely painted, cumbersome sandwich board. Walsh's Circus and Funfair. He sighed. Perhaps he should be thankful he could even read the script. His wife had been so insistent that she teach him. Early resistance had been short-lived because he could not deny her. You'll be able to teach our children. She'd wanted children, and he remembered the smile that grew across his face. It had been so hard for him to ever imagine someone wanting a family with him. But right then, this beautiful woman, who actually loved him, wanted just that. He was jolted from his reverie by the clattering of a shoulder into his back. He staggered wildly, the tip of his toe jamming between the cobbles. His arms stretched out and he tried to break his fall. Slamming into the ground, his right wrist twisted violently and he immediately wanted to be sick. Watch where the bloody hell you are going, shouted out the voice, the words having the sharp, clipped structure of a gentleman. Andrew went to turn and look at the man, but he felt a pressure hold him down. The gentleman was walking across his back, slamming his cane down harshly with each motion. As he stepped down, its silver tip struck him across the back of the head. No accident, just another indignity. The air had been pushed out of him, his wrist made his thoughts swim in a pool of agony, and his knees throbbed. Nobody moved to help him. Andrew lay there, wanting to cry, picturing the aloof man, biting his lip as he thought of some doctor or barrister treating him as though he were filth in the gutter. The quiver in his throat wanted to let loose the torrent of tears, yet nothing happened. There just wasn't the energy left to cry anymore. The cacophony of footfalls, chatter and shouts whirled around him, and he just closed his eyes. Just leave him there. Let him slip away. The sound of hooves striking against the street cut through his thoughts. A delivery wagon was coming towards him. It rattled and shook, seemingly held together more by the hopes of the driver than anything else. You! The man's voice was like a slap. Move your fucking ass! The driver was scowling at him. His face was like a craggy cliff. His sparse hair was slicked against his scalp with profuse amounts of sweat, and his eyes spoke of a hatred for everything. Andrew pr tried to push himself up, but the board just made him flail like some fool. You fucking stupid! Move! The driver bawled, clearly ready to crush him underneath. Nobody else really cared. Others on the road just wanted him gone. Nobody helped. Rocking side to side, Andrew managed to roll enough to clear the way. The wagon made its way past. Asshole! He didn't reply to the fresh insult. He just struggled to slip out of the boards and tucked himself at the side of the pavement as the people passing by glared at him with irritation. The city was always so hectic, so fast. It choked on its chimneys and its people. Time seemed to be a commodity nobody had but all craved. A minute lost created some profound absence that they may never recover from, and in chasing it, hoping for its return, could grind anyone under your heel. Andrew wiped fresh sweat from his brow. Clutching the board, he fought to stand. His legs felt small tremors shiver up their length as he stretched to his full height. At halfway between five and six feet, he hardly cast an imposing outline in the blazing sun. It was no surprise. As the middle brother, food had always been more for others than himself. He floated on that little island where his dreams fought to fill him. Reaching into his trouser pocket, rolling his wrist in a way that almost made him vomit, his fingers swam in the dusty depths, grasping a coin or two. There wasn't much, he knew, but he clasped them tightly as he could, knowing there was enough for a beer, 
It was all he could take comfort from. Dragging the board alongside, he shakily crossed the road and through the doors of the Red Lion, staying until the pain left him and his thoughts could move free of their tether. He looked at the board again. Andrew Walsh was a failure. Andrew and his handful of workers had set up on a patch of common land that they had been lucky enough not to brawl for. All of them were too damn tired, too weary. Exhaustion knew them at every moment of the day, and even the solace found at the bottom of a bottle could no longer sustain them. Of the few attractions that remained, all were in various states of disrepair. If Andrew had cared more, he would have been filled with fear about someone dying on the rides. But in the damp heat of the late evening, he realised he'd given up. He had spent the last three days walking through the city, trying to drum up business. The flyers had misspelled the name as Washes, but he had no money for a new pressing. When there were none left, he had still walked on with the board hanging from his tired body, shouting out the lines about great rides and excitement. There had been a time when such words were true, and he had believed them. But now, they felt so hollow. Doing all of this felt like nothing more than a habit. The last of a handful of revellers, who had paid the slightest bit of attention to his efforts, were about to leave. The young couple were obviously deeply in love. As the carousel spun about, the two sat astride the wooden horse, holding each other tightly, merely content to feel each other's warmth, to know they were close, to share a moment together, and hear the other laugh. It was here, almost ten years ago, that he had first met Andrea, a woman who had embraced the simple joy of the ride, and had been entranced by it. Again and again, she returned to delight in it, her laughter carrying so insistently through the air, Andrew could not have failed to notice her. Every part of her sang loudly with the joy of life. He could feel himself live in that moment as he watched her, the laughter beaming across her face, dancing in her eyes, the light freckles across her cheeks and auburn hair moving gracefully as the sun cast the final rays of daylight through the trees. He could feel the pain burn in his eyes as he returned to the present. The ride slowed and the young lovers left, their hands entwined. The funfair quickly ground to a halt. The lamps they had lit were doused, the music was silenced. Their little world became ever smaller and all the more dark. Andrew told himself he had done his best, that nobody could have spun gold from this, that the hand he had been dealt was impossible to beat, to overcome. But that wasn't completely true. He looked at what little was left of his family's empire and knew that soon it would all come to an end, that he would be made to sell the last remaining parts of the life he once had. Everything would go, even the carousel that Andrea had so dearly loved. The final parts of himself would be sold or dismantled. There would be nothing left. Lit by nothing more than the light of a cigarette, he made his way to his small caravan. As with every time, anxiety raged inside his mind as he approached. How had he, for so long, set his head down in the place where he had lost Andrea, where they had lost their baby girl? At first, he had needed the pain of the moment to stay with them, as though it somehow kept them alive in his mind. Though now, as the years had passed, the smell had become ever fainter the lines of a face more and more blurry. In the dim light of a sultry candle, he looked at the narrow space and the scant few possessions that remained. This was all he was leaving behind. This was all he had amounted to. The emptiness there was just another part of the hole within himself that he knew he could not fill. If he had but a few more coins, perhaps the doctor he had sent for that day might have saved Andrea. He might have saved his baby. Maybe, maybe, maybe. He tortured himself with maybes, trying to divine a path through time that would have kept her here with him. But she was gone and could never return. The memories were fading and soon there would be nothing left. Andrew blew out the candle and sat motionless in that ever unforgiving dark, edging closer to the day he would see her again. <laughs>